Hello, Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Safina Noreen binti Abumali. So today I'll be presenting my research topic, um, Private University International Student Adaptation and COVID-19 Experiences in Malaysia. This is, um, this is my presentation outline. So the first one, research background. Second, problem statement. Third one, uh, research objective. Fourth, research methodology. Fifth, results. Six, discussion. Seven, uh, conclusion. So this is my research background. Malaysia is known as a, one of the top destinations for international students to seek for an internationally uh, recognized uh, education with the affordable fees, multicultural society, English as our second language and strategic location. Study abroad gives benefit in terms of enhanced um, learning skills as well as to create the global awareness and to increase the intercultural skills among um, students. So according to Ahri, Ahrari et al. Uh, 2019, international students are viewed as an important value to higher edu education institution as well as to host country. So the highest number of international students in Indonesia are Bangladesh, Indonesia and China. Um, Malaysia has been recognized as um, the ninth best city for students in Asia back in 2017 uh, due to um, you know the quality of education that we offer, um, Malaysia offer. And then value for money, affordable cost of living as well as the uh, cultural comforts. All right, so um, as of March 2019, numbers of international students has reached to uh, 127,583, which 70% are from private institutions. So this is uh, by Malay Mail Online in September 2019. Okay, for problem statement, um, the first one, if students face difficulties in adapting in host country, it may affect their academic performance social and psychological adaptation level. This is by Singh, Jack and Chapel, 2012. Number two, intercultural tensions with local student and international student quietness has misinterpreted as refused to contribute. This is by Marlina and Turner in 2009. Uh, All right, so um, back in 2008, Botswana government notified uh, to reduce their number of students to Malaysia after received several reports made uh, that uh, by their students uh, that they face um, stress in adapting themselves in Malaysia. This is uh, in STAR back in 2008. Um, this has been one of the few challenges uh, that the, the international students face. Uh, according to Kumara Vadi Velu, 2016, international students referred as subalterns, which their opinions are being silent in urge to recruit. Uh, this is by Plona, uh, 2015, and recognized with an array of academic and cultural discrepancies. Uh, this is by Loma, 2017. Um, they also has been described as deficient in language and academic skills motivation and willingness to participate. This is also by Loma, 2017. Uh, this has been portrayed in the academic literature. All right. So um, th this is uh, the problem statement. My research objective um, for this uh, research would be the first one to explore the adaptation issues of international students participating in study abroad. Second, to identify challenges in their adaptation process uh, affecting their academic adjustment during the COVID-19 pandemic situation. This is my research methodology. For this uh, research, uh, I choose to have the qualitative approach. Uh, to describe the importance of experiences and to discover uh, the survive realm proceeding to the scientific justification. Second, responsive to the social construction of meaning and sensitive to the individual experiences and as well as communication. 
So for this research, uh, I conducted in-depth interview, process of collecting information behind uh, informants and experiences, verbal communication between two or more people with the main purpose to collect information, and then the third one conducted via online and researcher, uh, you know, will have uh, have the personal contact with informant through uh, the interviewing process and the observing throughout the session. So the informant will be undergraduate international student from year one. So this is uh, results um, for this research. Um, uh, international students in one of the main uh, private universities in Malaysia. So the first respondent, she's from Xinjiang, China, and she said it's quite challenging for her to adjust herself here uh, because she's away from her family and then it's hard for, him, uh, for her to adjust uh, for the first two months uh, and then uh, with the weather and the food. Um, she said that food wise, from the food wise, uh, it's a bit expensive to eat halal Chinese food. Uh, and then she doesn't like uh, our local food, uh, Malay food, because she said it's too spicy for her. And she struggled a lot um, uh, when it, uh, during this pandemic uh, situation, COVID 19, that uh, really affected her. Uh, and then um, her her academic as well. It's hard for her to, to follow the online classes um, because uh, due to the internet connection, sometimes slow and then um, it's hard for her to get in touch, keep in touch with her um, classmates uh, and then it's hard for her to, you know, to communicate uh, online without, you know, um, having to see the verbal uh, and non-verbal uh, communication, the body language is hard for her. Uh, and then um, she still strugg uh, she struggles and um, she cannot go back to Xinjiang, China because, because of the Uyghur issues right now. And then her family um, advised her to just stay here in Malaysia. Uh, and yeah, she's, uh, she said she's hoping, um, you know, day by day, right? So for the second respondent, he's from Germany. Uh, he said this is not his first time living abroad and his biggest challenge um, uh, would be the language because uh, he said uh, because of the different, um, you know, slang. So it's hard for him to understand sometimes when, it, when uh, com uh, he communicates outside. Um, and then from food wise, it's no issue for him. Um, uh, he said he, it's easy for him to just eat anything. It's no issue. But from the academic view, he said it's totally different uh, compared, uh, you know, academic or education wise uh, compared to Germany. Uh, and then he enjoyed the different uh, cultural activities. For example, you know, he gets to celebrate Raya. Um, and Chinese New Year, uh, which he couldn't, uh, you know, celebrate and um, that back in Germany. And he also likes, um, you know, uh, our sport activity, for example, badminton and futsal. And then with this, um, with the current situation right now with COVID-19, um, he said he's quite okay, he's coping well. Uh, because he lives here in, with his parents, uh, just that he couldn't go back uh, to German um, yet because um, you know to 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 meet with um, the rest of his family members. But but uh, one of the biggest issue um, right now would be for him, you know, to learn to online classes. It's hard for him to follow. Um, and as well as the limitation of 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 uh, having to you know to to see his friends um, because of this pandemic uh, situation, but uh, overall he said he's quite okay, um, uh, coping well uh, with the pandemic. Um, so for the third respondent, he's from Brunei. Uh, he said this is not his ex first experience in Malaysia. 
as his grandparents uh, live here in Negeri Sembilan. Um, but then uh, he do face challenges uh, when it comes to, you know, to stay far away from his family because this is his first time living abroad, living away from, uh, from, the pa from his parents and he needs to cope everything alone. He needs to cook, he needs to learn to, how to cook. Uh, how to manage his, uh, you know, financial, um, and then, you know, from the food um, perspective, he said he's, uh, he doesn't have any issues on that uh, because it's similar, Brunei and Malaysia. But for COVID-19 experience, uh, his biggest challenge was to cope with the online classes because right now he's back in Brunei. Um, he's been in Brunei, uh, he's back in Brunei since the first MCO in March. So it's hard for him to follow online classes sometimes because um, you know running errands uh, for his family sometimes uh, having to follow classes uh, while um, he was away uh, for his uh, uh, family vacation you know in Brunei. So it's one of the challenges, but it's not um, heavy um, for him to cope, um, you know, mentally and physically, he's okay with that. It's just that uh, for the online classes. Um, for the fourth respondent, he's from Af Afghanistan. Uh, he said this is not his first time experience living far from his family, but his biggest challenge was to cope with weather and food. For the first two months, uh, he struggled uh, and then uh, to cope with the weather and the food. Um, it's hard for him to communicate in English um, that much at first, but now he's coping because he uh, went for English classes. And now with the COVID-19 makes it even more worse because he's, uh, he's here alone in Malaysia. Um, he said he during the first pandemic, with the, the first try of, of MCO, um, he needed to sit in his um, bedroom alone, um, you know, for months. Um, he dared not to go out because he couldn't, you know, ask anyone uh, because he doesn't know how, where to go, you know, where to ask um, about the pandemic. He doesn't know with uh, the current situation at that moment. So it's hard for him to to face that situation, uh, to be just stay put in his, in his bedroom, you know, for weeks and months. Um, and then uh, at that time, it's hard for him to follow online classes as well and the assignments. Um, luckily that he, he he has his um, other friends as well um so yeah he's been with his um, international friends and yeah they cope with the issues and challenges together um until now but he do think of of um you know going back to afghanistan um but for now he just wait for the situation to, you know, to uh, to become a bit better, and then later he dis uh, he decide with his family. But that's how he said he's been, you know, mentally and physically affected. Um, yeah, that's him from Afghanistan. The fifth one, uh, he's from Saudi Arabia. Uh, first time living abroad here, alone. Um, you know, uh, first of all, he said struggle because he couldn't speak any English um, language. It's hard to communicate, you know, to even to order food. It's hard for him at first, but now um, uh, he managed to adapt with uh, with our local language. He knows how to say, uh, uh, he, he knows how to order roti canai or nasi lemak. That's a uh, 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 first few words, uh, uh, Malay like uh, words that he uh, learned. And then earlier this year, he, he said he faced um, some issues of stereotyping as a foreigner. Um, 
because he couldn't, uh, you know, he couldn't get, he couldn't, uh, he doesn't allow it. One of his friends, Kondo, the guard doesn't allow him to pass through and then he needs to call, contact his friend to, you know, just to pick him at the lobby, right? So that's, um, he said this, that is not his first time, um, you know, facing that kind of issue. And then uh, for him, from from the uh, perspective of, of, of food here in Malaysia, there's no issue because he said there's a lot of Arab restaurants here in KL. Uh, he's okay with that, and then uh, with uh, but then for the COVID nineteen, um, you know, he said um, big, uh, his biggest challenge was to cope with the online classes and the group assignment, and then uh, he said uh, he would prefer to have it um, physical class rather than online classes, and then uh, he does. Um, miss his um, family because he's been here quite a few years now. Um, yeah, he said he couldn't go back uh, to his um, hometown this year. So that's, um, you know, uh, a few uh, of um, the information that I received uh, when I interviewed uh, the first year international students in um, IMW. So this, uh, the discussion, uh, the finding of this research shown that um, these international students do face uh, quite, you know, a difficult time to adjust themselves here uh, for the first two months. From language barrier, you know, from food uh, uh, perspective, and then, um, you know, positive surrounding would play an important role for international uh, students to adapt. Uh, and then, you know, the support from the uh, locals as well. Uh, with the current situation of pandemic, uh, COVID-19, it sure does affect them mentally and physically. And as some of them live alone without uh, the family members, so it's hard for them to go through uh, the situation alone. Uh, and then uh, it's hard for them to understand uh, what to do next. You know, there's no clear uh, instruction from that point of view. And um, this is a research conducted by Malia 2020. Um, this international student face issues of confusion, depression of having to learn remotely, uh, also, negative emotion that needs to be addressed by the university committee, community by providing psychological support. So, yeah, in, uh, for them to cope, to go through this this pandemic is, you know, the university needs to play a vital role by providing them uh, psychological support and, you know, alert them or. Uh, provide them with information from time to time so that they would know where to refer to, where, what to do next, and when, when they face some, uh, you know, uh, issues or uh, in a difficult situation, they know uh, who to refer to. So these are the, the important things that they highlighted uh, during the interview. And then um, they prefer to have it... Um, um, physical class rather than online uh, because they said it's hard for them to follow the online classes. Sometimes, you know, it's um, um, due to constantly online, uh, you know, uh, it's hard for them uh, to, to, to follow the morning classes. All right, so that's uh, a bit of uh, uh, information from from uh, my research topic uh, and then thank you so much for giving me this opportunity uh, take care and stay safe right, so that's it from me um, thank you so much bye bye